The English Paper 2 single text question is worth 60 marks, that is 15% of your entire English grade. So usually the question would contain a statement and ask you to uh, discuss it, agree with it, disagree with it, or write a response to it. So here are a few examples. So let's, let's have a look at whether you can uh, agree or disagree with these statements. So Hamlet's madness, whether genuine or not, adds to the fascination of his character to the audience. If you're not familiar with Hamlet, don't worry, just insert King Lear here and look at this question from that point of view. It's a, it's, it is an unfalsifiable statement. You can't really argue that it doesn't add to the fascination of um, his character to the audience. So here, the essence of the question isn't whether you agree or disagree with it, but instead you want to talk about Hamlet's madness and whether it's genuine or not and how it helps to unfold the plot, how it helps to expose uh, what the other characters are like and so on and so forth. So here agreeing and disagreeing isn't really uh, a huge deal. So the next statement we're going to look at is in King Lear, honour and loyalty triumph over brutality and viciousness. Here it's kind of easy to sit on the fence, to agree with a caveat and say, well, there's a huge amount of brutality and viciousness. There's a huge amount of betrayal and death, more or less everything that can go wrong does go wrong in King Lear. So while you support the general gist that honour and loyalty are associated with the better characters and whatever good there is in that play is associated with honour and loyalty, but whether it triumphs or not, you're kind of not sure. So that's an example of uh, agreeing with a caveat. And the last one is Shakespeare explores both the destructive and the redemptive power of love throughout the play King Lear. Again, insert Hamlet if, if, if you want to um, be able to think about it here. This is just like the previous King Lear question. Here you can vaguely agree but also give reasons why you don't agree. So for example, I would argue that there's no such thing as the destructive power of love. Um, it's not love, it's pride, it's vanity, it's jealousy, it's all those kind of things that cause the destruction rather than love. So it's really just giving you an opportunity to uh, talk about the play and give all the different angles and opinions that you've managed to gather rather than necessarily signing off on a statement or declaring that it's wrong. A lot of people ask how do you uh, get good at writing these essays and the main thing is to stay relevant. So most people would know enough to do well in a single text question. You, you spend a huge amount of time studying it. So how do you actually make your knowledge um, shine on the day. And I think the key here is to stay relevant. So how do you do that? So you have to reference the key terms of the question throughout your answer. So let's have a look at these examples. So in the King Lear question, the second one, um, honour and loyalty triumph over brutality and viciousness. So you will want to talk about examples of honour and loyalty and examples of brutality and viciousness and maybe the characters that you most associate with um, those two terms. So honour and loyalty, you're looking at people like Gloucester and Edgar and brutality and viciousness is uh, Regan and Goneril and Edmund and to some extent actually King Lear, um, y you get the gist. And in terms of the, the madness essay for Hamlet, again, you're just going to have to talk about um, Hamlet's madness, whether, whether it's genuine or not, and how it adds to the play. So literally just look at the question, even just circle the main terms and keep coming back to them throughout your answer. And what that will help you achieve is to, um, because you're always using these terms, you will be able to keep yourself honest. You will be able to always talk about the same theme and stay on track because if the terms are there, well, you know, there is no way you can't talk about them. And the other thing is when you do that, you signal to the examiner that, hey, I'm talking about what the question is asking. Um, 
obviously you don't want to overdo it and some of the best essays do it very very lightly uh, but it's it's a kind of a um, place to start so if you can reference the key terms as much uh, as possible if this is a problem for you then it's a good it's a good place to direct your essay writing and then later you will probably be able to throw away that crutch and um, be a bit more creative in, in how you phrase things. And the other th thing is, is really just quite simple. Look back at the question every five to ten minutes, actually every five minutes when you're writing, because it'll just, again, help you direct um, your writing. So like they say in real estate, location, 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 here for single text and for poetry, it's quotation, quotation, quotation avoid long chunks of commentary without quotation. So every paragraph you write should have at least one quote or two. It kind of depends. Like if it's a long quote, you'll get away with just one. But if it's shorter ones, maybe two or three would be better. Um, the reason for that is, is that you need to keep giving evidence for all your statements. You know, you think that this is true because, you know, this happened in the play and this is the little chunk of um, the play that I will use to illustrate my point. So it's very important uh, to always quote. Uh, it's quite hard because, you know, you end up having to learn off a lot of quotes. So obviously here you need to be a bit um, clever in terms of what quotations you actually choose to uh, learn off. I would suggest that you um, get the quotations that your teacher suggested or that you like the most and actually just write them all on one page don't learn more than one page worth worth of quotes like there are some quintessential uh, quotes for um, Hamlet and for King Lear I'm sure a few come to mind when you're uh, watching this video um, basically it's just very important because it, the question even directly asks you that you need to um, support your answer with suitable reference and uh, suitable reference means quotation. Um, as well as that, it's one of the key ways for you to stay relevant to the question. And, and lastly, I just want to talk about some common mistakes that people make. So this goes for all essays, but especially for single text, I think it's important to have a good introduction. It makes a huge difference. Um, that's completely irrational, but unfortunately it's just how our brains work. It's like, you know, when you listen to the first 10 seconds of a song, you're kind of like, mm, do I like it or do I not? And, I mean, the examiners are obviously human and they're working very hard to give you the fairest grade, but you still want to just signal to them right from the start that this is going to be a good essay. And oftentimes you actually see an essay where the intro was kind of like, meh, and then they really warm up in the real essay and the, the essay is quite good. But you don't want to be taking that that risk that you need to impress the examiner sort of halfway through the essay. So really work on your introduction. And of course, how do you write an introduction? In order to write an introduction, you need to know what you're talking about in the main part. So you can only write an introduction after you've decided what the structure of your essay is going to be. So really the way it happens in the actual exam is you go in and like you're really nervous and there's you know 10 questions or whatever that you need to answer and the way you plan it it's not going to be neat it's just going to be a bunch of buzzwords somewhere you know in the margins of your exam paper or in your booklet but you really just need to kind of write down the key it literally just has to be buzzwords because it's only for you the key things you're going to talk about and that will give you an idea of how you're going to structure your paragraphs and of course that will also feed into your uh, introduction because you can't give an introduction unless you know what's in the main part so what some people do actually is they skip over the um, the introduction at the start they write their main part and then they go back to the introduction. So they leave like, you know, five or seven lines empty, and then they go back to writing the introduction. 
Um, so it, it's really a big deal. Um, you know, whether it's rational or not, I, I think it's, it's really important. Uh, the other thing is people like to use fancy words as in like you swallow the dictionary. Of course, it's better to use a literary, beautiful language, but you don't want to overdo it. The occasional word that is rarely used is good, but don't have more than one per sentence. Don't have more than one per paragraph, really. Um, I just gave a quote here from George Orwell, so never use a long word where a short one will do. And it's really, imagine you're reading it. When someone's trying to be overly pompous, it just seems kind of fake. Um, you want to be very clear in terms of what you're saying. And that brings me to the last point, which is long sentences. So I think people feel that, first of all, they just need to get the whole thought into one sentence. Um, and that's not, not really true. Shorter sentences um, really work better. They're much, much easier to understand. If you want to experiment, um, you're welcome to do so. And you you will definitely find that a short sentence is just so much easier to deal with. So instead of writing long ones, break them up. Break them up in two. Don't worry about it. And prune them. Like Clarity is really a huge deal. So instead of making something um, terribly ornate, you should make it very clear. What are you saying? What your argument is? Why you think something is true? That is really going to um, make it clearer to the examiner than uh, kind of abstract winding statements that don't end anywhere because it's just much more difficult to sustain your concentration when you're reading a long, long sentence, especially if that isn't clear. So it's not like you shouldn't have any long sentences. It's okay to have a sentence that goes on for two or three lines once in a while. But by and large, people overdo it. And of course, your punctuation, your grammar, agreeing the different clauses within a sentence. Like most people aren't really able for those sort of maneuvers, but, but they think they are. And you're much better just not going there and being clear and that will probably be much easier much more digestible for anyone to read so really you're you're considering the reader in this case the examiner um when you're writing in um sentences that are easier to um easier to understand